A couple of weeks ago, I received an email from a young lady and she is single. In the email, she talked about how that she is dating her pastor. They have been dating for one year now. Her pastor planted a church, but she still attends her church. She's currently in the process of transitioning to his church. In the email, she talked about how that she reached out to me because she need my advice for a couple of things. One of the questions that she asked is how to prepare yourself if you're not as spiritually as your partner. And she also wanted me to talk about the importance of having a mentor, how to find a mentor. Another question that she had to ask too is that if you're not in the same church as your partner, how best to prepare to transition to your partner's church? In this video, I'm going to answer the first question, which is how to prepare yourself spiritually. And in my next video, that's when I will discuss the importance of finding a mentor. And part three is when I will discuss when you should transition to your soon to be husband's church. If you want to have a good relationship with God, one of the first things that you are going to have to do is make a daily habit of communicating with him. In the Bible, it talks about draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So if you want to draw closer to God, one of the first things you're going to have to do is spend time with him on a daily basis. So what you need to do is to look at your daily schedule and figure out what time that's convenient for you. When you spend time with God daily, don't focus so much on how long of the time you're spending with Him. And don't try to commit to something that's hard for you or impossible for you to do. With myself, each day I commit 15 minutes or more to spend time with God. I have a Bible app on my phone and it's called YouVersion. What I like about YouVersion is that it has different plans that you can read. Recently, I was reading a plan about drawing close to God and one of the things that stood out to me is when it said we should seek God's face and not his hand. And what that means is that when you pray, instead of asking God for things something that you personally want him to do for you. Instead of asking God for things, which is seeking his hand, try seeking his face instead. Seeking his face means to draw nigh to him because you want to get to know him better. You want to learn him. You want to get to know his ways. If you know God's ways and you learn him, it's gonna give you the desire to want to serve him. You will be able to build a genuine relationship with God when you learn to seek his face and not his hand. So what I'm saying is that you seek God because you know that you need him in your life and because you want to draw closer to him. Don't focus so much on things that you won't. Focus more on just trying to get to know him because you want to please him. It's just like in a marriage, you want to get to know each other. And if you want to get to know each other, you're not gonna focus so much on your spouse buying you things that you want. Instead, if you want to have a good relationship with your spouse, you're gonna try to spend time with your spouse because you want to learn him. You want to please him. So in order for that to happen, you have to spend time together. You have to communicate. You have to talk. You have to share things. You have to do the same thing with God. Don't just seek him when you are in trouble, when you have a need, but seek him because you want to get to know him and because you love him. In the Bible, it talks about blessed are those who moan and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And that's one thing that I pray about to God often. I ask him to help me to hunger and thirst for righteousness all the days of my life, to fill my cup, to help me to seek him continuously, not because there's a need, but only because of I want to get to know him better and I want more of him. 
I'm thinking about creating a video about the tools that I use to encourage me to spend time with God daily. If that's something that you would be interested in and you want me to create a video about that topic, please leave it in the comment section below. Read your Bible, examine yourself, and, and focus on areas in your life that you need help in. You start reading scriptures related to that particular topic. And if you're not for sure about areas in your life that you are weak at, you can ask the Holy Spirit to show you and to lead you on what to start reading about and He will help you. One of the things that you have to do is to read God's Word and meditate on His Word throughout the day. And the only way you're going to be able to meditate on God's Word, you're going to have to remember what you read. So what I try to do is in my daily time with God, I try not to read no more than three verses a day and just to focus on just one of those verses. And sometimes I only just read one verse a day because the main thing is that you want to be able to remember and focus and meditate on what you read. And the only way you're going to be able to memorize and to be able to meditate on what you read is just trying to intake a small verse. From the Bible and you don't have to read a different verse each day you can focus on that particular verse for the whole week and just absorb what is saying and allow it to enter your spirit pray I understand that sometimes when it's time for you to pray you may not know what to say or what to pray about but my best advice to you is to pray about issues that you have going on in your life. No matter what season that you are at in your life, it's, it's an area in your life that you need help in. For example, if you are working in your career, you can pray about becoming a better employee. If you um, have a hard time with keeping friends, you can pray and ask God to help you to be a true friend to someone else. If you are a mom, you can pray and ask God to help you to be a better mom, to help you to give your children what they need from you. If you are a wife, you can pray and ask God to help you to be a better wife to your husband, to help you to please him. There's always something to pray about. I was very young when I got married. I was only 21 years old. And my husband is 12 years older than me. And so he had, he had been married a couple of times before we got married. So he had children from his previous marriages. So I was a stepmom. And not only that, I would say maybe like eight months after we got married, my husband felt the call of God on his life to pastor a church. So he started pastoring. So I had a lot going on and I needed God in all the areas of my life. I wanted to learn how to be a good wife. I needed to learn how to be a good pastor's wife. I wanted to be a good stepmom to my stepchildren. And not only that, I had a baby. I had a lot going on and there were many days to where I felt overwhelmed, stressed, discouraged. I'm so thankful that I had a relationship with God and I felt comfortable enough to talk to him, to tell him things that I was struggling with. And I know that he already knew, but I didn't try to sugarcoat anything. I was honest with God and I asked him to help me. I asked him to help me to love my stepchildren, to help me to give them what they are liking in their lives and to help me to treat them the way that I would want someone to treat me. I also asked him to help me to be a good mom, to help me to be an example to all of my children. I asked him to help me to be an example to women at my church. Most importantly, I just wanted to grow in all the areas of my life and I knew that God was the one that could help me more than anyone else. So the more I prayed, the more God would talk to me and would tell me what I need to do to become better. In my early years of marriage, 
I learned how to talk to God and to tell him what I needed to share with him areas in my life that I felt that I was weak at because I felt that if I would pray and to be and be honest with God and let him know about some of the issues or some of my concerns that he would help me and he did. He gave me wisdom of how to be a good pastor's wife, how to be a good wife, how to be a good stepmom, how to be a good mom. So don't be afraid to talk to God and when you pray, be honest with him. And I would say this too, when you pray, pray more about yourself, the issues that you have. I became a strong Christian when I started praying to God and sharing my problems with him. Once God started speaking to me of things that I needed to do in my everyday life, and I listened and I applied those things to my life, I became a better mom, stepmom, wife, and first lady. And once that, that happened, it caused me to trust God even more. I desired to want to be closer to Him because I knew that my help came from Him. And I discovered that as long as I had a good relationship with Him that I could handle anything that came my way because my strength comes from God, not from myself. This is very important. Attend your local church weekly. When you attend church regularly, that is how you grow in Christ. That is how you're able to learn more and to hear God's word. As a pastor's wife, you're going to have to learn to love church because that's going to be 95% of your life will be church. So you do need to fall in love with going to church and attending the services regularly. Try not to miss any services. You want to learn how to be faithful, faithful to your church, because that's one of the main roles of a pastor's wife is you're going to have to be faithful with your attendance. If you have any questions about any of the tips that I gave, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. If there is a particular topic that you would like for me to talk more about in a video, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you stay tuned for part two of this video. Becoming a new person's wife, what should I do? Bye.